Yay. Okay. Um, so I'd like to welcome everybody. Um, I, Emma Miskew is our presenter, and uh, Emma, Emma needs no introduction. <laughs> She's accomplished uh, more than many other people in this lovely world of curling of ours in her short life. Uh, I got to know Emma when we went to the Winter Games in Whitehorse. I think that was 2007. Um, and we've kind of been in the same curling circles, fortunately, for the past many years. So tonight, um, Emma would like to be able to keep this an open, interactive discussion rather than me having to mute everybody and then unmute later on. So if you're not sure um, how to mute yourself, not the webinar, but yourself, then maybe you could be as quiet as possible and keep the background noise to a minimum and we'll try to keep, um, keep the microphones open for discussion and for um, you know, conversation and questions. So, Emma, I am going to pass the presenter role to you, and we will be able to hear your or see your screen. Sounds good. So, welcome, Emma. Thank you so much for doing this. You've had Hi. so much success in the in the past with sponsorship, and uh, I thought it would be great for people to hear your experience. Yeah, thank you. Um, can everyone hear me all right? The sound coming through. Um, I, uh, I I'm going to start by saying that um, in our success, it's taken a lot of work to even find the sponsors that we find. But we have a method now that we we try to stick to, and we're looking, and uh, it seems to have proven somewhat successful. So I'm I'm happy to share that with everyone here. Um, uh, so starting off. I'll just jump right into it. And again, if anyone has any questions, feel free to hop in. Um, identifying potential sponsors. That's the uh, part where... Me. I'm okay. not sure I'm seeing your screen, Emma. Oh, okay. Is it, ju is it just black? Have you got something um, up, Emma? Yeah, I do have... I do have a slide shot. Can you see anything now? No, we're still seeing... Uh, we screen. We're still seeing... I think seeing it's Andrea's. Screen. Yeah, it's Andrea's. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. One sec. That's better. It's oh, there out. we go. Okay. Good job. All right. Well, um, so in terms of um, sponsors, the first step is obviously being able to identify them. Um, and not every company um, has even invested any sort of time into sponsoring sports. So um, one of the first things, it's who you know. Um, you never know if you might have um, a friend who knows someone in a company. Um, then be able to put a someone to give their opinion on whether you would be a good team to sponsor is always a helpful start. But for us, like we, when we were younger, we were able make some connections through people that our parents knew. But as we got older, the connections part kind of slowly went away and we had to go different routes. So a lot of one of our first sponsors was actually a tweet that we sent out saying that we were looking for sponsors. And one person saw it who knew a company that was looking to potentially sponsor a team and he approached them and we ended up going there and making a pitch. So that's how our first sponsorship on our own came about. Um, we, in, that was one of the connections thing, but we always said from the start, um, in terms of conducting yourselves in a way that would attract a partnership in any area that we went, any um, sort of event or just in our personal lives, we, we tried to conduct ourselves in a way that we, we thought maybe anyone could be watching. And um, we never knew if someone it might attract a sponsor. And in one situation uh, with Pinties, it actually did. We didn't know that we were um, hanging out with someone 
that worked for Pinties, and they ended up going back to them and saying, hey, I was hanging out with these girls. They seem really cool, and I know we were looking to sponsor a team, and it turned into something. So it obviously doesn't work every time. That's a unique circumstance, but that was kind of something that we decided that we would try to do wherever we were because we never knew if someone was watching or might like us and want to sponsor our team. Um, another area to look that can be helpful is companies or organizations that are already involved in sponsoring sport or support sport. It's hard to convince someone just out of the blue to start sponsoring a team, but if they've already been involved in sport, it's a good it has almost your foot in the door already because they know what it's what it takes to sponsor sport. They already believe in it. They are probably fans of different sports. So that's a good step as well. Um, and then companies looking for marketing opportunities. There are a lot of small to medium-sized businesses out there who are looking to get their name or their brand out there. And there aren't a lot of ways to do that. Um, aside from these days, social media is a big one. Um, so offering some sort of partnership in exchange for social media and to get their logo out there so people just are Googling and looking for who they are. Um, and then organizations that support the community also tend to be pro-sport and pro-supporting athletes. So we find that those are the first steps in how we'll go out to seeking a potential sponsor. And then, like, it's not an easy process. Um, it's almost, I, I consider, like, a, it's like trying to apply for a job. You get rejected way more often than you'll even get an answer. So it, it's very frustrating at times, so you have to be patient through it because uh, obviously not everyone you approach is going to be interested, so you have to be able to take the rejections and, and keep moving forward. Um, how to reach out to companies. So aside from having a connection, a direct connection, which is always a great way to start, not everyone has that. So similar to applying for a job, find a contact at the company that can that can direct you to the appropriate person. Um, if you just email blindly, it's going to be pretty hard to get through to someone who can actually make a difference. So every time we've reached out, we've tried to ask for a specific contact and then been included in the in the email chain getting to that person so that we know the appropriate person has received the email. Um, searching the web for a means to connect to someone. I've used LinkedIn, and I find that that's a really nice or a good way to at least search for who the right contact person is at a certain company to reach out. Um, you can search the company name. You can search by their position. There's a lot of information there, and uh, we found in the past that there's a lot of top um, people in companies that actually use LinkedIn. So we, um, I've actually reached out to a few people through LinkedIn, and I would highly suggest that. Um, and then it, the best way to reach out, I find, is through email. If you have a preliminary phone call, that doesn't hurt. But through email, you can include all the information that you want them to see so that they keep reading or they keep thinking and maybe it'll turn into something. Um, so introducing yourself and what sport you play and who you are, and then including a sponsorship proposal right from the start. Um, and that can involve doing a lot of work on the side in creating kind of a template that you could use for a sponsorship proposal and then editing it to, like like you would do with a resume or a cover letter, editing it, editing it slightly for every single company that you send it to to make it more catered to them and they, they notice that. Um, another thing that um, I've done in the past is going to uh, different networking events in the city or even if you're traveling somewhere and there's a networking event that you can go to, th those events are usually for clients. So if you can get into one of them and be able to talk to certain people, you never know. Even someone you're talking to might know someone else who's interested or have a friend or they might be a big fan and then just meeting you sparked interest in them sponsoring you. So 
I find the face-to-face -face connection at those events can be very impactful. So creating a sponsorship package, and I'm going to go through kind of a mock sponsorship package that I used a few years ago for our team, um, but what to include, so important information of who you are, um, your goals. They want to know what, where their funds are going to be going to. They want to know how, what, how, what an impact that can make on you, um, your accomplishments individual bios, partnership opportunities, so how they can benefit from sponsoring your team. The sponsorship stuff, it, this does not go one way. It's, not, it's usually not a company that is looking to sponsor a team just for the good of it, as much as we would like to think that, and there are probably some organizations out there that do that. Most of them, they have an objective, and their objective is to either gain exposure of their company, to create a different brand image. There's always a, a reason that they would want to get out there. So figuring out what that might be for them and then catering that inside your sponsorship package. Um, if it includes TV viewership, to include those numbers would never hurt. Um, and then what you would offer them in return for their sponsorship. So aside from getting a logo on your jackets, on the website, um, a lot of companies that we've worked with, their <coughs> primary reason for sponsorship are um, teaching all their clients how to curl and bringing us out for a day and uh, socializing with everyone. And it's, it's their client days that they care about most or um, doing commercials. They're, there's a lot that they just wanted some video time so that they could put stuff on their social media. Um, and then social media is a really big one. We've worked with a few companies in the past that that was all they wanted was social media boost, and they really didn't care about having a logo on our uniforms, but they really wanted to make sure that the amount of blasts that we sent from our team account were within a certain range so that they would get enough traffic to their social media pages. So it, every, every sponsor wants something in return, and it's about figuring out exactly what is the most important to them. Um, and then your contact information on the bottom. Um, a lot of times, even though they have your email, it's nice to put it on there because if they print it out and pass it to anyone else, you would want to make sure that they know how to reach you. Um, very important to remember not to put too much text, only the relevant text, only what's necessary. Um, I got some feedback early on when I started doing this. Um, I made this large booklet. It looked really, really nice. I'm a designer, so I spiced it up and I put everything possible in there to try to sell our team. Well, most of these companies read through the first two pages and then were like, okay, that's like a novel. I'm not going to read this. So we, I learned quickly, like, less is more and try to keep all the important information in there, but not make it drag on. Um, and then images of the athletes and the team. They want to be able to put a face to the name of the team they would be potentially sponsoring. Um, it helps them to feel connected to the athletes. So we always make sure that we put a good amount of images in there. Emma, we have a question that yeah, came sure. through um, chat. What kind of networking events are you talking about? Is it business meetings? Um, yeah, um, conferences. Them, yeah, they're usually business conferences, small business conferences where um, they'll host them in the cities for small businesses. I've gone to a few. I don't know about every city, but I've gone to a couple different ones in Ottawa um, that they host at a couple of the convention centers here. They'll host them, and it's just a matter every all these small companies will have a little booth, and you can go around and talk to people. Um, so it's mainly businesses ones. I've gone to a few sport-related ones, but it's usually um, involved in a, an appearance or something. So that's just kind of lucky that I got to go to those. But the business ones are usually you'd have to look them up. Like they wouldn't be advertised very well, but they have them, I think, in most cities because it's a matter for people to to network, all the businesses to network with each other and figure out how they can help each other to grow. 
Perfect. Great. Thank does you. Does that answer your question? I think so. Okay. Yep, it does. Great. <clears throat> so I'll get into an example of a sponsorship package that this is from a couple of years ago. Um, I'm lucky. I'm a designer, so this stuff is easy for me to put together. But um, PowerPoint these days, you can put something together that it's pretty user-friendly, and you can put something together that looks aesthetically pleasing and also the information out there. Um, so the uh, first part that I usually would put in is the goal. And you want to make that bolded and, like for us, it was obvious to represent Canada at the 2018 Winter Olympics in Pyeongchang. Um, and you want to pump yourself up. It's not, this isn't a humble page here. You're going to say anything you can um, here to make sure that they know how you think that you can achieve this goal. So everything that I put, or that we decided to put on here, um, we decided to put on there for a reason, and it's just to show that we believe in ourselves. Um, so this, I, when I include here just our titles, and um, we have the potential to be one of the greatest to ever play the game, that is not something that we would be sharing with anyone. That's not how we talk. That's not really what we would say to anybody else. We, we're trying to get companies to believe that when they're coming on to sponsor us, they think that we are pretty confident that we can do this. Um, we also include here um, the CTRS. Like we have some graphics here that our social media guy puts together for us, which is great because visuals are always more helpful. But just in the CTRS points race in this from that year, the 2015-2016, and uh, just how we were ahead of everyone. Um, and the bios on this next page, we did. Uh, a quick little, our highlights up here, and then we have each person, and then this is the reason for each photo here, and then a little individual bio is so that they can see what we're doing outside of curling. So there's like an occupation and an education and hobbies, um, and it just helps to paint a picture that's not just athlete, it's um, we're also human, and we have other interests as well. While curling is our main priority, um, we're human, and uh, it just kind of helps them to get to know us a little bit and um, want to be a part of our team. So this page, this is letting them know that we understand we can do something for them too. This isn't just them supporting us and trying to achieve our goal. This is being able to help them to gain exposure of their company. And this doesn't need to be lengthy, but we are just letting them know that we can cater whatever to what they would like. Um, and then viewership is something that we added in because we get a good amount of TV time. Um, it's hard to get these numbers sometimes. So if there's, we got them because um, we requested them for this, but obviously every year it changes. And if you're going to be adding viewership in there, um, it's the, as straightforward as you can get it not too much information, but just the highlight numbers to show that curling is a popular sport to watch. It used to be perceived as not being that way. So we really try to show that it's not only continuing to grow, but that it's already big right now, um, and that it ranks really high in Sportsnet and TSN viewership. For social media, so this is all outdated, but just being like writing in, in terms of following, if you can figure out how many hits you have to a website, because the website they care about a lot if you put their logo and the link to their website on it. So they want to know how much traffic is going to your website. Um, and then followers on social media, 
if that's what they are interested in is really important. Um, and then just here at the bottom, we have just a couple of random points that would be helpful for a company to know just how many, a certain post, how many people it reached, um, so that if they ever need a boost like that, they could go through that channel with us. Uh, we also included some graphics showing how many website page views in various months, um, just Instagram followers, um, comparing other players, comparing other teams on Facebook, how many followers, and then uh, peak reach, so how many people saw our various posts that we posted on Facebook. Um, and then this page is something that you can include anything you think that sponsor would be interested in. Um, Learn to Curl Clinics, I find, is a really good one to include in there because it's an easy thing for a team to go and do that is a really big selling feature for the sponsors. Um, and then team appearances at corporate events, speaking engagements, golf tournaments, autograph signings, or trade shows. We've done all of those things for different sponsors that that's their priority at the time. We went to a golf course and sat on a hole and greeted people as they got to the hole or we monitor the hole-in-one hole just because it was something fun where we could interact with their clients. So everyone has a different priority on what they would want to see in return for their investment, and it's about figuring that out. Um, and then logos on our jerseys, it can be off and on ice. Um, and then, f like, everything on the team website and social media. And uh, logo on autograph cards, and I'll show that a little bit later as well. We uh, go around with autograph cards throughout the season that have all of our sponsor logos on them and hand them out to everyone. So it's another even small amount, but it's more exposure. Uh, we include our season for the following year, um, the dates, if we know them when we're sending this out, and then um, we'll put a little pending qualification next to the ones that aren't guaranteed. And then we have where they'll be broadcasted, um, if they are broadcasted on the right. And then contact information. So that's, are there any questions on that just before I move on? Good. Okay, so in terms of timeline, it can be different for every single company that we've reached out to, but being patient is key because the sponsorships can take a really long time to approve on their end. We've had some that have taken six months to go through their marketing department and um, back and forth on adjustments to the contract, and then we've had others that have been done and signed off in two weeks. So it it really depends on how they, they run their marketing department on their sponsorships. And um, being patient can be key. With gentle follow-ups, I put every other week, that's probably on the high end. You wouldn't want to, you want to be nice and follow up and keep them, keep them thinking of you, like not to get forgotten. But you also don't want to annoy them to the point that they don't want to work with you. Knowing that things take a while, you can ask questions like, how or what process are we in here? Or like what at what point is this in the department are they di discussing? Is there a certain meeting date that we should be aware of so we know when to follow back up? Um, a lot of these contacts at the corporations, they really like if you ask them when you can follow up after a meeting because then if it's not on their mind, then they know that you're going to write it down and follow up for them. Um, and then being flexible. So, like I said before, you, there's a lot of different priorities for different sponsors. So cater the contract if you get to that point to what the, they would want most, and that's the best way to to close the deal. Maintaining relationships. 
So you get the sponsor and now what? This is a part that I feel is very important that gets neglected a lot. It's like we get the sponsor and then we wait till they contact us for something. Um, I feel like that is a big mistake in how a lot of teams might lose their sponsors if they're expecting more from us. So organization is really important. Setting a schedule with reminders, not only for communication with that sponsor, but also social media blasts, because that can be worked into the contract as well, that they want a certain amount of blasts. And if it's out of sight, out of mind, sometimes that stuff's forgotten. You put their logo on your jacket, and then you don't think about it again. Um, and then another element is just ensuring if they did get a logo spot on that jacket, that you send them a mock for their approval, um, before you go into production. We've had some that we've sent off for production and come back and had sponsors unhappy with um, exactly the placement on there. So we've learned the hard way that it's best to send every sponsor an approval of that jacket and so that they can approve it and then there's, there's no issues down the road. Um, providing updates to your sponsors throughout the year on your team's progress. We've done quarterly newsletters in the past. Uh, I think we're actually still doing those now. I've, we've done mid-season reports, end-of-season reports, um, just trying to keep everyone in the loop. Another reason for that is a lot of time you're communicating with one person at a company, and they know how they're, you're doing because they've been following along and because they have a relationship with you. But then there's other people within that company that don't understand why they are investing in this curling team. Um, so if you provide a newsletter or um, a document with like a report of how you're doing so far, they can pass that along to other people in the company and then they know where the investment's going. Um, and when you intend appearances with the sponsors, ensure First and foremost, you are well rested going into the appearance. They can be long days, and it's not a normal day. You're expected to be chatting with people all day. You're not supposed to just go hang out and sit with your team by yourselves. You're expected to be meeting their clients that are there, engaging them in conversation, and uh, it can be pretty exhausting. So making sure you're well rested, stay off your phone, and connect with anyone who's there because you never know that one of those people might be a potential sponsor in the future or they just like you so much that they want to invest in the team as well. So we, we try to go into those days completely charged up and we know at the end of the day we're going to be exhausted, but it'll be worth it to make the sponsors happy. So this is an example of a newsletter that we would send out to our sponsors. This was an end of season report, but we've done them quarterly now. So we'll put here our sponsors and then we have our results from the season and so on the, whatever we finished on the side and then how we finished on the ranking system at the end of the year. Um, and then we actually broke it down by viewership for all of the TV games that we got on TV for, included a few pictures so they can see that their logos are on our apparel from the season. Same sort of thing, this is at the Scotties, we showed all of the numbers for viewership. Um, this is something when they pass on to the other people in the company that they uh, can see where their investment's going on their logo for their sponsorship. Um, website information, Twitter information, and then Facebook on there just so that they could see. We included an image of us at the Santa Schmirler Telethon. Um, just shows that we, we do give back as well. And um, the event schedule for the next year already for them there. And then any other information. And we showed um, our community outreach. Um, and then this is our, uh, actually it's our just at our local club here, they ha host the blind championships for curling. So we went there to support that event. 
and we went, we did different learn to curl days with sponsors that year, so we put that in as well, uh, the Pinchies event, and then we had one with our Pacific Ruby Alice group where we, we taught everyone how to curl there as well. So we, we like to include this stuff to show, even for uh, other sponsors, the type of things that they can engage us in as well. So maintaining relationships also, we find our sponsors really love that we do autograph cards with their logos on the back. This is what it looks like um, front and back here. And then we'll print these out and we actually hand sign all the cards as soon as they're printed and divvy them up between the four of us. And then we uh, hand them out to all the kids and parents that are at our events. We'll put them on the sideboard and then hand them out to anyone who wants them. And uh, it's just another way for our sponsors to get some recognition. Um, we also send mid-season holiday cards in December to all of our sponsors. Um, just wishing everyone a happy holiday. And uh, we send end of season plaque for their wall. Um, so this here on the right was our plaque from this season. Um, we just, I get it put onto a plaque on um, like at Black's Online and I order a bunch of them and I send them to our sponsors with a card and uh, at the end of the season. And then on the left here, that was a thank you we did for um, all of our sponsors in the Olympic year. Um, it's just a little touch that goes a long way as they we go to their offices a lot and we see that these are put up on the wall. So we, we know that it means something to them. Um, some years, like last year, we all had Olympic jerseys. So we sent an Olympic jersey to every single one of our sponsors for supporting us through that Olympic year, and uh, that also went a long way. So just little things like that, saving a jersey, printing a plaque, um, having it all signed and sent to them makes them really happy at the end of the year and more, more wanting to sponsor you the following year. And... As of right now, um, are there any questions? I really like your suggestions, Emma, about LinkedIn. I never yeah. would have thought I never would have thought of that, but that's a that's a great suggestion. Yeah, it's one of those places where there's just so much information available on what someone's position is within a certain company and that's the only place that you can really find that if it's not just on Google when you met, write it in. Mm -hmm. um, so I've, I've reached out to quite a few people on LinkedIn and everyone's really receptive because it's a social like business network. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. We also just show an example of how our um, website. So this is, we do our website and then we have all of our sponsors on the website and they're all linked. So if we click on the link here, it brings you to their website. And that was another thing that was really nice for our sponsors. They loved that we could just link it to their site. And then we had so much traffic to our website that okay. they were getting this traffic too. Oh, that's awesome. We have a couple of questions that came in on the chat line, and that's great that you showed the website as well, Emma. Um, do you ever put dollar amounts on sponsorship packages, or do you let companies determine your worth? Uh, that's a really good question because we've been we've gone back and forth with that a lot, um, and it's you're kind of putting yourself out there when you put a dollar amount on there because there's some companies that might not negotiate with you and there's others that might, but we've, we've found that we won't put a dollar amount on there. We will reach out and find out what sort of um, sponsorship level they're looking at first. So we figure out, we don't ask them straight up for a budget, but we figure out whether they're looking to be a like title sponsor where we're wearing their colors and their logo is most prominently located on our apparel and we give them more appearances or if they're looking for something smaller and then based on that information on how they respond 
we would provide a I'll provide a mock up jersey and say, okay, well for this these spots and color, you'd be looking at this sort of amount. And then for a smaller spot that's a little less prominent but will still give you appearances in social media, we would be looking more in this range. And then that gives them the opportunity to share whether they are thinking that's too high for them, but they'll tell you at that point if you're giving them ballpark options. I think just saying a certain amount right off the bat can be tough because you might be underselling yourself and you might be overselling for them, depending on it. But we usually find a compromise with our sponsors or the prospective sponsors where, oh, that's kind of we were hoping for a little bit more for that amount. We're like, oh, okay, like why don't we add in an additional logo? And then they think that you've compromised for them and they're happier. So instead of having everything concrete, we kind of work on a negotiation discussion and figure out what sort of exposure they're looking for before we give them a a concrete number. We used to give numbers and realized that it was really hard that way to figure out whether we could be asking for more or whether certain sponsors were just not even responding because the amount, they, they didn't like seeing the amount right out there. Perfect. Uh, we have another question. <clears throat> yeah. um, do you have any samples from when you were juniors? Uh, this coach is, is saying we're not at the TV level yet. That is totally fair. The examples from when we were juniors for sponsorship packages are the ones where I put every possible piece of information and created a <laughs> novel. So that's not one that I, I would want to share too much. But before we had the TV numbers side, um, you would be – you wouldn't put that part in, but it doesn't mean that they can't benefit from the partnership with you in other ways. Um, in juniors, we still were able to get sponsors, and they didn't ask for a whole lot in return because they were trying to support kids. But we found that being able to sell that you're still you still have goals and you're still trying to compete to go to a national junior, and that's your goal and um, you want to be able to practice and put a lot of time into this. Um, when they see that, that is what's going to drive a sponsor to potentially work with you. And then also being able to give something back to them and that you might teach them how to curl. It's just everything's on a little bit of a, a smaller scale because there's no TV, but it doesn't mean that they still don't want to support young athletes who have – um, goal, big goals to achieve something really great. Because you could still emphasize the Facebook page, the social media, the website, that kind of thing. Yeah, you may not have the. Right. You might not have the TV viewership, but you have all those other things. Yeah, and doing autograph cards with their logo on it, and all of that stuff that seems so little, but it goes a long way for. The sponsors to get and the um, junior events there's still a good amount of people there so it's not like their logo isn't getting seen it's just not getting seen on the same scale but it it is getting seen and um, through social media that makes it even bigger great um, we have another question how important is winning to a new team seeking sponsorship Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I that's a tough one. I think that it's not as much in in our experience. It's not as much about winning that has gotten sponsors on board with us. It's about the relationships that we've grown either with people in the company or um in them just believing in you. So we've had a couple of bad seasons where we haven't been able to write that those same viewership because we didn't get as much TV time because we weren't winning. And um, most of our sponsors are completely 
back or backed us because they know who we are as people. So it's about figuring out how to maintain or get those relationships going and meeting people. And they see how great of a person you are and how great of a team you are, and they believe in you regardless of the results. With pin, like I said, with Pinties earlier, they we were hanging out with one of their guys at a restaurant after an event, and we this was really early on. It was before um, Joanne was even on the team, so it was a while ago, and uh, the guy just thought we were awesome to hang out with, so he reported that back to his company, and they decided to sponsor us. Like We weren't the top team at the time. We weren't, um, like, we were, we got some TV time, but not all the TV time. We weren't winning all the time, but they, he just thought, well, they were awesome, and I think that we should try to help them achieve their dreams. So remembering when winning is obviously helpful in getting your point total up there so that you can um, you have something to show that you're really working hard and um, it's showing. But I think it's also just how you conduct yourself out off the ice, even on the ice, and who's going to notice that and who might who might want to support your dream. Great. Um, back to the 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 question about um, not putting dollar amounts in. You do have an idea, sort of, of how much you would like for each spot on your apparel, correct? Yes. Yeah. So we create that list quietly, um, just for us, because there are some sponsors that might have a bigger spot that are giving. Um, a smaller amount than another sponsor that has a smaller spot. It just depends what, what kind of deal we worked out with them. So we don't want to share an exact, like, guideline as to what each spot is worth to anybody other than ourselves. So we create, like, a jacket, and then we write on, like, this spot should probably be worth about this amount compared to this spot. And then we – that's kind of our goal. And then when we – when we go and approach a sponsor, we know the idea we have in mind, but we also know different other spots that we can get them on board with if they don't want the first spot that we're offering. We have all of our options laid out for us. Great. Okay. Um, is there a range that companies are spending on curling sponsorship? Is it a? Is it? Whoops! I just lost it here. Is it a thousand dollars? Ten thousand? Hundred thousand? What? What? should uh, a team expect to ask for I think and how much how much would be reasonable for a junior team I think on, as a junior team you kind of want to mi- build as many relationships as you can whether you're just putting like a small logo on your arm um, and you're putting a bunch on there because those are the relationships that could continue on when you're not junior anymore. So you don't really want to be refusing too many, even if it's a small amount. Um, it's hard to say an exact dollar value um, that's acceptable because it would depend on the t- Like you don't want to be turning down money if you don't have other sponsors lined up. I think any amount helps when you're a junior. We had, we started off our parents were paying for our whole season like we didn't have any (laughs) sponsorship when we were younger so as soon as we did have companies that were interested and willing to sponsor us it was just a nice change for our parents not to have to pay for the entire season um so we were taking anything and it was hard enough to find them so we whatever we could get and we would give a logo we'd get it embroidered because there was no sublimation at the time and get our jackets and that's just how we went about it and then as you get more comfortable, um, then you could say, okay, we have a minimum now, and this is our minimum spot, and then anyone who can give up to this amount will make them our title. So you can, it's, I don't think you can really say that there's a certain amount of money that should be in a curling sponsorship, because what they're getting for worth on um, TV time versus at the junior level is so different. And um, right now, at I would say that if you're if you're on TV and you're getting good TV numbers, you can ask for more than 
if you're playing around the local clubs, which still is great. They're still getting good exposure, but it's hard to put a dollar amount on what they should be spending. Um, I think it's whatever works for your team, but I think at the junior level, just building up those relationships and learning how to interact with sponsors and how to make them happy, um, you sh we shouldn't really be turning anybody down. And if it gets to be so low that it's not worth your while to get their logo stitched on or put onto your apparel, then obviously that's where it would be cut off. Like you have to be making a little bit of money on top of how much it takes to produce your apparel. So don't don't paint yourself into a corner kind of. Yeah, it's I mean, it's tough cuz it's kind of like when you're trying to get a job the first time that you don't want to say no to all of the salaries because you want to be making so much money right when you start off. You have to build up your resume to be able to turn down jobs that don't pay as much as you would like them to. It's kind of like that with sponsorship. Mm -hmm. You you kind of take whatever you can get because it's so hard to get sponsors. Um, and then once you've built up your brand a little bit and you know what you're worth because you've you've had other sponsors before, then you can start picking and choosing which ones are worth it and which ones aren't and making sure that the ones that you go with um, get enough exposure for the amount that they're giving you. But I think that when you're when if someone's willing to sponsor you and you have space and uh, there's no one else that's going to be taking that space, I think that it's worthwhile to just build up that relationship, impress them, and then ask for more the next year. Perfect. Great. Um, how is the sponsorship money invested for your team throughout the season? Was there a time when you previously didn't have the sponsors you have? And how did you prioritize the spending of sponsor money for team expense at that time? So, first of all, how is the sponsorship money invested for your team throughout the season? Um, at the spon it's going towards our expenses. Um, we have, with the level we're at now, we have a lot of flights. So, um, having additional sponsorship money for that is really helpful. And then we're, we're rarely playing in Ottawa, so we have to get hotels everywhere we're at. Um, so, flights and accommodations are primarily what our sponsorship money goes towards. And then we have the little things that I was mentioning on there, like end-of-season plaques and autograph cards and all that that we pay for as well um, to make our sponsors happy. So it's just a little investment that we put in to be able to hopefully have a long-term investment with their, our sponsor. Um, and in, when we were younger and starting off and we didn't have the same – sponsors that we have now um we definitely it was hard to figure out how we would ration our season but um we were four to a room for a while and, <laughs> um i remember that too like not not when we were little like we were in women's four to a mm -hmm. room and uh that was kind of our motivation to start to get more sponsors because nobody sleeps well when there's four people in the room um it was pretty tight in there. So we we would do that um, to save money. We drove a lot of places to save money if we could get there by car. Um, we paid for all of our own food, whereas now we're able to budget our food kind of on our sponsorship money as well. So there's a lot of things that we cut back on at the start to make sure that we would be able to get our way or get through the season and uh, continue with sponsorship hunt throughout the season so that we would be able to at least go two to a room and not four to a room. But <laughs> it, it, you do what you have to do. It's not easy when you start out. And I imagine that our parents spent way more money than they would even tell us. But uh, it's when you have a dream and a goal and you really want to achieve it, um, you figure it out at the start and then hope that things fall into place. Um, do you offer receipts? And and do uh, do companies want receipts? Uh, oh, receipts for their 
sponsorship. Their investment, yeah. Uh, yeah, we'll send them an invoice if they want it. Um, and some places, it's more just a reminder of when they're due, like the date that their um, amount is due, because sometimes sponsors would like to pay in increments. Um, so we would create like an invoice just to, it's as a reminder, like, oh, this is when it's due. Um, and I don't, that's just something that it depends on the sponsor. But yeah, if they would like one, then we would create one. Okay. Are you incorporated? We are not incorporated. Okay. <clears throat> and that's, I mean, that's, uh, that's something to, that's quite an undertaking. In to order to incorporate, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what would be the high, low, average sponsorship money for SLAM teams? What would be um, kind of the highest level, and maybe well, the lowest level could be, you know, five hundred bucks, but for SLAM teams. You mean total, or just like for a title sponsor? For a title sponsor, what would you what what would the slam teams generally ask for? Or um, it's hard because like most teams have a confidentiality clause with their sponsors. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. Like I wouldn't be allowed to share what our title sponsor gives us because we've signed that we won't share that but mm -hmm. um there's some teams that talk and whether it's true or not about having um like a six-figure title sponsor wow um but i don't like it's sometimes the men just kind of they chat so i don't know um, <laughs> i don't see any paperwork or anything i don't know but um i think it like a lot of a lot of the top teams they don't just plaster their jackets with logos. Um, they make sure that each of their sponsors has a good amount of real estate um, and isn't cluttered by other logos. So they'll have like three or four really great sponsors for amounts instead of like 10 or 12 smaller Little. amounts. Yeah. Um, so I wouldn't really know the amounts that everybody gets um other than some of the men's teams chatting um bragging to each other so they could mm -hmm. just be embellishing a little bit in, in my experience i've heard anywhere from ten thousand dollars to forty thousand dollars for for the title sponsor in you know amongst the women's teams and and then i suppose for some of the the sponsors that are offering you know, like the lowest amount, um, 250, 300, 400, 500 dollars instead of a spot on apparel, it might be, uh, the logo on the autograph cards and on the social media, on websites, that kind of thing, yeah, correct? Or like a couple of tweets worked in or, um, yeah. yeah, just smaller or you go to a couple or uh, like a an event for them or something like they just mm -hmm. it, it might be just be a different arrangement that you have with them right right so very individualized yes have you found any specific industries that seem to have a particular interest in investing cur in, in in investing in curling i we're always looking um <laughs> right well we have um a lot of the food category currently. So <laughs> <laughs> that area, um, oh, we used to have pinties and then with beef and eggs and boost and all that, we're definitely taking care of nutritionally. Um, we've noticed lately that um, if you want to look for who's interested in curl, good first step is to see who's sponsoring um, the Grand Slam of Curling and who's sponsoring Curling Canada events because a lot of the time those sponsors might be interested in sponsoring um, either grassroots or other teams or anything else um, on top of their sponsorship with either mm -hmm. Curling Canada or Grand Slam of Curling. So seeing who's on their websites, and then you can possibly reach out to them and see if they're looking to um, invest in another team or invest 
somewhere else. Uh, we noticed we were actually laughing because there's a lot of um, tractor companies right now that have just gotten into curling, so I don't know if they're all kind of going against each other trying to get the top, like, farmers to buy their tractors, but uh -huh. it's more than normal recently, and uh, and it's different every year, too. It's who wants to be a part of um, curling, and someone probably in their company kind of started watching it, fell in love with the sport, or they're a curler themselves, and then decided to get into it. So even going to your local curling club and um, if there's any business owners in there, you know that they like the sport because they play it. So a lot of curlers also have um, jobs that could lead to something for you. So there's that as well. I, I think there's a country and western song, isn't there? She thinks my tractor's sexy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, part B of that question, have there been any sponsors that ended up not being a good fit for your team? And if so, how did you approach that? Um, most of the sponsors that we got through to signing with us and having a relationship um, turned out to be good because there was a long process of negotiations and getting to know each other before that happened. But we had had some interest from uh, from some sponsors that we didn't think would be a great fit for us and we decided not to go through with it just based on um, either the image that it would portray or um, what they wanted us to do um, in terms of advertising. So we decided that um, now at this point because we wanted to keep within a certain image that we would not go through with those. So if you really have a bad feeling that there's something not right about a specific sponsor and how the image would fit in with your team, um, probably look into it a little more before you sign anything. It's um, a relationship that's going to last a year. When uh, Actually, when we were younger, we had a sponsor that um, the guy was just kind of a fan and he wanted us to come and stay at his house and he, not nothing like inappropriate or anything, he just, it was a very weird relationship and it turned out that um, some of the, like the checks bounced from them and it was just not a very professional relationship and we kind of had a feeling from the start that it was like that. So um, from that point on, we just decided that we would stick with sponsors that we felt comfortable signing and spending time with the um, marketing people that we were going to be at events with and connecting with all the time, and uh, it's worked out pretty well from there. Great. Um, what's the hardest part of selling your team to companies? So are there any misconceptions around curling in, in general and investing in curling that have been a challenge to overcome? Yes. Um, first off, um, a lot of people who aren't curlers or who don't really watch um, still think curling is not a sport of fitness and is not a popular sport to watch in Canada. Um, and it's a lot less than it used to be in those people who think that way. But the curling's not a sport response is something that we've received before. So that can be um, pretty irritating when um, we're all at the gym daily, like practicing daily and trying to be as fit as possible, and then someone's telling us it's not a sport. So I think there's people out there who truly think that way in a company, and you're not really going to be able to break through those people if they truly don't think that curling is worth watching or a good sport. It's almost worth just focusing your energy on someone who does think that is a sport and who does like it because we've, <laughs> our experience with those people is that you tell them that it is a sport and then you show them and they laugh because they think you're joking and it's just it just becomes kind of infuriating <laughs> so to have to spend all this time to first convince someone that curling is a sport and um, there is a high level of fitness and you think that or not you think, there's proof that it is actually um, on Sportsnet viewership, second most watched sport 
in Canada and they laugh, you just don't even focus any more attention there. We'll just kind of no. let those ones go. Um, you want, you're never going to sell someone on a sponsorship who doesn't believe in your sport. So going somewhere, like looking somewhere else, and sometimes if that's the case, what we've heard from and what we've done is you find their competitor and you go there. <laughs> that's because, excellent. Yeah. Excellent. You need to invite some of those potential sponsors, although you're right, forget about them, but they need to go to the gym with you and see how hard you're working. Yeah, and, it's usually and, people who just don't watch and they have no idea. And they yeah. Have this preconceived, so they just, they don't care enough and it's not, it's hard to convince someone already, let alone someone who doesn't like curling. Yeah, exactly. Are there any other questions? All right. Well, Emma, thank you so much for um, being available to us. And, and this was a, a great presentation. I'm hoping that the the timing for this was ideal because we're in the off season now or the preseason or depending on your, your level. Um, and this is a great time for people to coaches and teams to start putting their packages together and getting them out there. So anybody that's in Ottawa, pay attention to who is sponsoring Emma's team Holman already and stay away from those ones <laughs> or go for the, go for the junior aspect of it. So, yeah. all right. Thank you so much. Um, oh, Dick's back. Uh, all right, so um, that's it for this evening. The recording will be shared. Emma, I will send a link to the recording to you as well. Um, there's lots of thank yous here on the on the chat box. Um, so I will be in touch. I'll send you an expense claim. And um, thank you very much. This has been invaluable. Yeah, thanks for having me, and uh, good luck, everyone, in your sponsor hunts. Thank you. Take care. Bye.